Hi guys, my name is Jamie, this is the Gecko Room, and I'm here to talk to you about my favourite type of gecko, or my favourite species of gecko, the white line gecko. These guys are absolutely fantastic little geckos, and they are really pleasant little geckos as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little care guide for you today on these guys. Now normally, first thing I'll say, these are the most handleable geckos, but with this little girl here, um, she's really she's kind of got used to me she's very calm she's very collective so she's kind of got used to me but if you see me kind of not looking at the camera it's because she's still fast and she can still be very flyer yeah. as you can see these guys are absolutely beautiful and they've got this beautiful little tail here and i don't know how i can see it without a jumping but they've got these brilliant white lines down their back so they have multiple names they have White line geckos, skunk geckos, palm geckos. Hello. Uh, these guys are closely related to the Tokyo gecko. But the difference is, apart from they do grow roughly about the same length when they're fully grown, but they are a lot more slender, as you can tell, and also they're not really as fire. Which, if you're a gecko owner, that is always a positive. Now, like I said, these are the most handleable geckos. Um, this one is a rare, rare. And my babies that um, are in a tank just behind me there, um, they're quite handleable. That's mostly because I've, obviously, since they hatched, kind of worked for them. Um, it all depends, really, on the breed that you get them from. Some places it will, they will be handleable. Other places they won't. These guys I actually got from a local pet store which are really good but they don't handle them that much so I had to work very hard. She is very trusting and she has kind of like I said got used to me but you won't get them all like that like I said obviously if you got them from myself which I do sell them um, you would get quite you would get handleable social socialized geckos. These guys have handleable but obviously not always so I've put back in um, her terrarium now just so she can just kind of chill and not over stress out because obviously in that I've worked with them I want her to still feel like it's a pleasant experience for me to handle her. Now going on to temperatures and humidity. Where these guys come from uh, they are native to Indonesia so and it obviously the forest the rainforest over there so they require like I said they do require high humidity and a high temperature. Um, these guys do well through the day at around about 32, 33 degrees. Um, basking support probably up not much higher, really. I've kept all my enclosures really at high. I make sure my thermometer's high up. Um, have it 30, 32, 33 up in the canopies. And obviously down below it's always cooler, so if they want to get cooled down, they've got that temperature gradient. Um, with the humidity, Indonesia is historically quite a hot place anyway, well, humid place anyway. So with this, I keep the humid. I always say you keep the humidity around about. I'd say no higher than eighty percent, but no lower than sixty. I roughly keep mine about seventy-five. At night it does go up to eighty-five, ninety, but it won't kill your animals. Everywhere you go when it when the sun goes in, the humidity rises, which is good. Now on the feeders, um, you can feed these guys. They are insectivores, but you can also feed these guys gecko diet. Um, I suggest that mostly with um, the juveniles, um, my younglings and uh, my hatchlings, they're on a mixture of Pangaea and flightless fruit flies. With the adults, um, I'd probably say give them an insect based diet and make sure they've got loaded, lasting calcium. Um, I suggest locusts. Um, Apart from, I don't know if you can hear in the background, apart from if they escape, they don't make that horrible sounds crickets, and crickets make, but also they are a lot better for the um, gecko, which um, they're, not high, they're not as high in fat, but obviously they'll still help the gecko put away, but they will also, um, they're also not going to bite your gecko if you by any chance that you leave them in there and they don't, you can't find any, they're not going to bite your gecko like crickets, and more importantly, they're not going to drive you insane. Because the, <laughs> look at like these are in my reptile room, but as you can hear, this we don't know where these crickets have come from. We've not really fed any of our reptiles crickets for quite some time. We only really do it as a last resort if we can't get any locusts. Um, but 
myself here, I actually am breeding locusts. Um, can save save money really, especially in these these kind of times. Anyway, back to these geckos. Like I said, these are closely related to the Tokyo gecko, so that means breeding behaviour is pretty much the same. These guys can breed all year round and do. Um, currently, I actually have an egg in one in their enclosure there. <coughs> um, they were in another enclosure, which. Obviously, we're in two single enclosures. Um, I've moved them together now because they are doing pretty well now. They've, they're not breeding as much, which is a good thing. But, like I said, um, I've got probably another, in that enclosure there, I've probably got another five eggs to hatch. Plus one in there, which is a very rare occurrence. Normally, they do layer two eggs at a time. But in this case, for some reason, she's only laid one. Don't know if that's just coming up to the end of when she wants to breed or her egg process, anything like that. But, like I said, these guys are prolific breeders and they stick their eggs to the side of the enclosure. Um, they will, the, the female will predominantly put it in a place where it's perfect heat and humidity. They will know where to put it, so you don't really need to take it out. It should need to be absolutely fine in your enclosure. Um, as far as we are aware, um, these don't eat their young. The only time I've ever seen them really eat an egg is if it's an infertile egg. But most of mine bar, that's like I said, one has been infertile. So I've not but the geckos that I've hatched with the mother there have done absolutely fine. Um, now these guys can be comfortably housed in a 30 by 30 by sorry 30 by 30 by 45 exoterra when they're on their own. But I never really say that. I never really you can put them in as singles. But I won't personally. I wouldn't. But like I said, if you if you're not got the money or the room, then that they will do fine for a single one, um, for a for a single or a, a pair. I always suggest, like I put these two in, a 45 by 45 by 60 exoterra or the equivalent. If you're looking at zoom ed or you're looking at a wooden one, I still always suggest the terrariums because these guys do a lot better in bioactive. Plus as well, it's got the air that you need. So obviously with these ones, you've got the air that'll come through there and through there, which yes, it can be a struggle to keep the humidity, but at the same time, you get, they, get, they get the airflow that they really need. Um, with the substrate, <coughs> um, like I said, you'll need something that will basically keep a lot of humidity in. Um, you can either use a cocoa fibre, what I use, which is actually something I use for pretty much all my animals now, is a mixture of organic topsoil and play sand. Um, mine are all bioactive. These are absolutely perfect for bioactive. Um, obviously, make sure that you've got your cleanup crew in there as well as all your plants. But these, but that one's perfect for them and it keeps the humidity really well. I missed maybe, well, my mister, misties, misties, my mister, my mister, misties, mists, sorry, I can't get the words out. Anyway, it does it twice a day, and that's more than enough. So I have it once in the morning, and um, what I do is I've got two separate misting systems. So for my day geckos, obviously, that'll go on at a, it'll go twice in the, through the day. For my, for the rest of my geckos, so, um, sorry, <laughs> sorry for my nocturnal geckos. I will use, it goes on once in the morning and once probably about 10 o'clock at night when it's dark, just so they've kind of got a bit more drinking. Sorry I couldn't get my words out there, I've been a little bit slow today. Um, it is ra rather warm in here today, even though it's um, currently, I think it's about 11 o'clock here at the moment. The reptile room is still cooling down, so it's around about 24 degrees and I'm not really doing the best in the heat today because it's been quite warm where I am. <laughs> um, like I said, with these geckos, they, they are phenomenal pets. Um, I see a lot of places saying that you can probably use them as a first time pet. I personally wouldn't recommend it um, because obviously with the parameters of the knee, plus most people that want their first gecko want one that they can handle. And like I said, my female and my hatchlings are rarer, but nine times out of ten they are not the most handleable of geckos. And like, even though they are a lot more, 
well they're not keen to buy it like it's okay gecko these guys still will buy and it will draw slight blood it, not enough to do any damage to you but uh, anything thing but you will you will feel it um and they will they will also these guys do drop the tails and they have beautiful tails as it is so once these tails drop they're not going to look the same they're not going to look as nice <clears throat> plus they are fast so if if they do get away from you, you're going to have fun catching them, especially the juveniles. The adults, you probably catch them, still very fast and it will take a bit of time. Um, as I said, I got my female out earlier, she, she, she has a bit of a runabout, she'll eventually come out of my hand, I'm just sure a bit scared about, but she'll be like, alright, oh, you, okay. But my male, he, he will just run away and he will, even if I manage to grab him, he will he'll run away. And because these are slender geckos, they can get hurt really easy and it's, ju it's just not worth the risk but if you want a gecko that you can watch you can especially at night the, the, the phenomenal they make they make sounds but obviously they don't like the talk here constantly going tuk -er, tuk -er, tuk -er. but you can hear them and it does sound pretty it's pretty relaxing when you can't hear crickets seriously i need to find out where these guys are they're driving me insane <laughs> So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it's been, um, I hope it's helped you really. If you if you're looking at white line geckos, getting one. Um, like I said, in the UK, you're not going to see much of these guys. That they are a very rare gecko species to see. But if you do find one, I highly suggest it. Um, and if you have liked this video, please just like, um, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more coming up. Even though we are called Gecko Discovery, it won't be just Gecko content coming up. I've got, um, there'll be, we, our reptile room's not just geckos, we've got snakes, we've got bearded dragons, we've got other lizards. So we'll obviously put guides up for them and um, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed it and we will see you soon.